My friends, if you've never had a proper English Yorkshire pudding, all kinds of sizes, well then I suggest we change that. Five ingredients is all it takes to have the best five minutes of your life. Well, maybe, you know, all right. Now let's go! Now, I'm gonna go in with our eggs here. I'm gonna try a new technique. I've never done this before. I don't know if anybody has. Take my eggs like this. <laughs> oh man, I, I was hoping that these would drop in a certain way. And then I could do a really cool pickup where I just pick them up and do, don't do that. Don't do what I did. Although it's okay. There's actually only one eggshell in there. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know what that was. Not faked. It's not faked at all, okay? If you do get an eggshell in there, the best way to get it out is with another eggshell. Now watch, and you just scrape up the side of the bowl. Look, straight out, another one over here, straight out. Look, if you're impressed by people who can do a one-handed egg crack, well, you're easily impressed. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Look, my dog could do it. He doesn't have any hands, he doesn't have thumbs. I think it's weird that he doesn't have fingers. Doesn't make sense, I always look at him in my lap. I really do, I'm like, dude, it's weird you don't have hands. I'm staring right at him, he's sleeping. <clears throat> you got a little messy this morning. Say hello to YouTube, say hello. So tired. I like to just crack it on flat, and then all you're doing, you're doing this. Look, you're doing this. You're going like that, that's all you're doing. You just go whoop, super easy. There we go, six large eggs. Of course the recipe will always be in the description. Now we'll just weigh out this flour. I'll put the recipe in both imperial and metric systems in the description. For now we're going to ounces and we're gonna weigh out 6.5 ounces of all-purpose flour. Any old all-purpose flour will do. Do you guys know about the Webstrant store? It's a really cool restaurant supply store. I'll put a link in the description. I'm not affiliated with it, not making any money. It's a supply store for restaurants, so everything is cheap and durable and awesome. Like I got this scale there. I got this omelet pan there. I got these Rubbermaid spatulas there, all cheap. Honestly, I'm surprised more people aren't talking about that store because it's really great. You just gotta pay shipping, but it's worth it. Now, this I'm gonna do for my English homies. Sorry, Americans. You know what? I'm gonna rant about this for a second. It, it deserves a rant. First, let's just see what that 6.5 ounces is in grams. 184 grams, my friends. Listen, only three countries in the world use the imperial system, which is the American system with cups and all that. Number one, America, that's us. Number two, Liberia. Number three, Myanmar. Myanmar! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> the rest of the world is using the metric system with grams and milliliters and all that, which is far more accurate. And with myself being from York, England, being a Yorkshire man myself, which is why these Yorkshire puddings are gonna be incredible. They kind of have to be, it's in my DNA. If I mess these up, like, I, I shouldn't even be here. Anybody who's into baking or pastry definitely follows the metric system because it is far more accurate and easier to follow recipes and recreate recipes, more importantly, to the T. That's it, that's all I'm gonna say about it, I'm out. Now, we're gonna measure out our milk, eight ounces to be exact, 250 milliliters, and then we're filling up another two ounces of just water, so 10 ounces total of your liquid. I went slightly over there, but it's okay. Now, nice big pinch of salt here in the flour, about a half a teaspoon. We'll just start by whisking up these eggs. I always like to break a few yolks before you start whisking and then go for it. Now we'll go ahead and sift our flour in like so. God, I love sis sifting. <laughs> Get the salt out of the sifter, right? It's still in there. And now we're just gonna whisk this until it's completely smooth. Whisk it a little more than you think you should. You wanna whisk this till it's really smooth. This isn't one of those situations where you want lumps, like uh, pancakes, right, or something like that. Really just wanna work it, come together really fast. If you have one or two little lumps, no big deal, but you do wanna work it. This looks pretty good. Ah, nice. Last thing, just pour in your liquid, just like so, my friends. There we go, now, this batter is gonna seem pretty thin to you, but trust me, that is perfect. It's almost like crepe batter consistency. Crepes, 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 I say crepes. Now, we're gonna cover and refrigerate for 45 minutes. That's money, dude. Okay, now pay attention, because this is probably the most important part of this whole video. And that is what fat do you use to make Yorkshire puddings. Now you can make really good Yorkshire puddings just using any kind of high smoke point oil, like avocado oil, for instance. But if you wanna make unfricking believable, unforgettable, excellente, is that a word? I don't know. Yorkshire puddings, you gotta use beef fat, beef fat or beef drippings, I should say. In England, they have a Sunday roast, right? It's a very traditional thing to do on Sundays. Whether you cook your Sunday roast at home or you go out to a restaurant to get it, a pub, 
I should say, you will have roast beef, so you'll have all that beef fat and drippings which make the perfect Yorkshire puddings. I have here some beef fat, and I have here, just to make this extra special, I'm so excited about this. This is the butter left over from that butter steak we cooked that whole big ribeye in. Just so flavorful, but I don't wanna use too much of this because it might burn a little bit. So I'm gonna use mostly beef fat with a little bit of this butter and ho ho ho! Trust me, these are gonna be the best, maybe best Yorkshire puddings ever. So I'm just gonna add some of my butter to this beef fat. Could also try these with duck fat or goose fat even, chicken fat. They are best with animal fats as opposed to oils, I would say. And I'm just gonna microwave that. Now you wanna use these muffin trays to make Yorkshire puddings. I like bigger size ones. I like my Yorkshire pudding to be absolutely massive. And I will show you some more stuff you can do in terms of size. You can make this as small or as big as you want. Toad in the hole is another popular English dish that you would make a large one with sausage. But today I'm gonna be using this size of muffin tray. And something cool you can do here is just fill up two of these. You kind of need to eyeball it about two thirds of the way up like so. And then what we want to do is just tilt the whole tray up and like a little waterfall of beef fat will fill up these equally. That is absolutely perfect. And now they're just filled up about a quarter of the way, even a little bit less. What I would do before putting this in the oven is wipe off some of the excess fat so it doesn't smoke. Now we put it into a 400 degree oven for a full 15 minutes. We need this whole situation to be ripping hot before the batter goes in. That is really the trick to a great Yorkshire pudding, that and the fat. Let's go. Now, batter's had that full 45 minute rest. Here she is. Give it a little mix. I don't know if you can see this, but it is definitely noticeably thicker. The resting in the fridge is really important. Please don't try to skip that step. All you want to do now is pour it into something that's going to be that's going to make it easier to pour into your muffin trays, right? That's good. Also, just to prove a point, I'm just going to pour some of my beef fat into anything. Literally, I'm using a little omelet pan. You can use any baking dish or anything just to make a huge one, right? You don't have to do individual muffin size is the point. So I'm gonna make one massive one because that's always fun. Same deal, 15 minutes in the oven. Okay, now very careful here, my friends. You wanna fill these up three quarters of the way, three quarters of the way up every single one. carefully but quickly straight back into the oven. Now I'm using my leftover batter for this big boy right here. Same deal, just pour it in, straight back into the oven. Now around 25 minutes is all they're gonna take, but that massive one I might do for 33, 35 minutes, right? Just because it's a lot bigger. If you're doing smaller ones, do it a little shorter time. But for most of you using normal muffle, <laughs> muffle? But for most of you using normal muffin trays, 25 minutes is perfect. They've been in for just about four minutes right now and this is just the beginning of the process. You can see its little side poking out. <laughs> and I think you saw all that butter foam we've been talking about for days now. When I poured the batter in, don't worry about that. That won't happen if you're just using oil or fat. And as you can see, it's already gone back down. You just don't want a lot of oil on the tray, otherwise it's gonna smoke up your oven and there for your house. Watch this in real time with me for a second because these things are literally growing right before our very eyes. You, I, this is literally 20 seconds later than the video I just took. This is just so fun for me. I've been sitting here like a little kid watching them and it, it's literally like you watch them grow before your eyes. It's so cool. Amazing. It really is amazing. Wow. Gosh. <sighs> These look so epic. Let me let me get in there again. We're only five minutes into the cooking process and look, just look how they jump. It is so freaking cool. Okay, I'm gonna shut up about it, but just wait. Here we are 10 minutes in. I might have gone a little too big on these, but no, I have not, man. I'm telling you, these are the most glorious Yorkshire puddings I think I've ever seen. And look, look, ah, there's the big one. Oh my God. Oh God. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes! You all ready for the big one? <laughs> oh, very nice, right? Very, very nice. Oh my gosh. Ooh, ooh. This is Yorkshire pudding. And I'm telling you, that right there is literally heaven. Something to note here, I might've put a little bit too much fat, so I just took them out so they're not sitting in that muffin tray, right? They're just resting on the edges there so it doesn't get soaked in fat. But honestly, I don't mind. <laughs> The best way to eat these is to dip them in gravy made from also the roast beef drippings on a Sunday roast day.
guys gotta understand, I ate these when I was a little kid, and so when I eat them, it brings me back. It brings me back. All right, Fridge, let's do this. Oh. I'll see you tomorrow, and until next time, my friend, you know I love you and I'm out!